Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna do data cleaning and preparation for our weather time series example here. Um, let's just dive on in here. We downloaded the data in the last video. I will put a link up in the top and hopefully one in the description. So if you have not downloaded data, um, you can do that. You do not need the exact same data as me. Um, you just need weather data from this website from the previous video. Okay, so let's start off here. We're gonna click the tab on the top here and do a new R script. Um, let's save this. So we'll do save as um, time series data here. So you can see I've already been working on this project. Um, we'll call this version two though for this code. Um, we're just going to save this as data and goal preparation for weather. You can name it anything you'd like though. Um, but let's get started here. So today we're going to do data exploration um, for weather data. And the first step here is we need to import the data. Um, everything we downloaded here was again was in CSV. To do this, you're just gonna type in what we're gonna call it. This data is for Dallas, so I'm gonna call it Dallas. And we're gonna type in read.csv. And then the two things we're gonna really need here is going to be our location. And we already know that header is going to be true. Make sure your true is all caps. If it does, if it's not, it will not work. Um, but here's where our data is located. You copy the address, then you can paste it in here. Again, remember if you're running inside of Windows like me, uh, these slashes have to be put the other direction. There might be a shortcut for this. If you know of one, you can put it in the comments below, but this is how I do it. Okay, and then we also need the file name. So we'll go back here copy the file name, and then put .csv. So you can see here, we're gonna call the new data Dallas. We're gonna read it in using the read CFV function. We have the location of the actual file with the file name at the end here in the CSV, and the slash is going forward instead of backslash. And then finally, we're gonna have header equals true because we know there are um, labels at the top here. Again, if you hit control enter, it'll run this code real quick. Uh, and you can see up here on the right, it says Dallas, and it's 47,346 observations with 74 variables. So let's just view this real quick. So we'll type in view Dallas, and then again, control enter or alt enter. I think both work. But it'll show you the data here. We have a lot of variables, and a lot of them are missing. And then if you scroll down, there's a ton of different locations. But one problem here is we need to define our goal. So typically when you do model development anywhere, um, you should define your goal before you get going. We're in a little different situation because we're just gonna get some data. We're gonna create a goal given the data that we have available, and then we're gonna actually create a solution to it. But typically you would sit down with the business owner or whoever's wanting that model built. It could be you, but most likely it's somebody else and they're gonna define the problem for you, and then you need to go out and find the data to make sure you have the right data. Um, in this case though, um, if you look here, we have our station number, which is completely meaningless for us. I mean, I don't know what all these mean. Uh, we also have the name. So Forney is actually a city in the Dallas-Fort Worth area here. If we scroll down, you can see like there's Garland, which is another city. Uh, so let's narrow this down and do the city that we would like to choose here. And there's a lot of different cities. So let's just choose one. So let's just look at the stations, right? These are kind of cities, I don't know, areas that are available to us. Um, to do this, we're going to just create a new variable called station and stations, okay, and stations is going to be unique. So I wanna look at all the unique values um, from the Dallas data set, and we use a dollar sign, and we're gonna look at the variable or the column called name, okay. Then we're gonna, dang it. <laughs> then we're gonna type in stations, and we're gonna run that, and it's gonna create uh, this big table for us here. So let's just look through this quickly, all right? We have Forney, we have Richardson, Garland. There's a lot. Anyways, if you look here, we have the Dallas airport. So this is gonna be the data 
that probably has the most reliable data. It probably has the most data. Uh, if you looked at the data that we printed out up here before, like for example, Forney has a bunch of missing values. Um, I looked at this earlier, but if you scroll down and we'll look at it here in a second when we filter it out, we just wanna keep the Dallas airport. Um, if you wanted to do something trickier or more unique, or if you cared about the entire Dallas Fort Worth area as a whole, uh, you could actually create your own variable essentially by taking the average of every single one of these locations for the weather, and then that would be your Dallas Fort Worth area average, and then you could use that for modeling. Uh, we're not gonna do that though. We're just gonna pick the airport. It's reliable, there should be a lot of data there. So let's just select that. So in this case, we're gonna choose the airport because the data should be robust. And to do this, we want to keep uh, only the name column here. So I'll just put it in parentheses here. I'll put it in quotes. Um, we want to keep it so that it's going to be equal to, let's just copy and paste from down here, make it easy on ourselves. Okay, copy this, paste. We want to keep all of the names in this data set. So we're going to go through this entire data set. And if this column here for name uh, is going to be the airport, we'll keep it. Everything else will drop. And to do that, um, all we're going to do is type in airport, which is going to be the name of the new data we're working with. Uh, we're going to type in our original data set, which is going to be Dallas. And we're going to type in which Dallas is the airport. And then we're going to do dollar sign name, just like the name column. If this is equal to, so you need two equal signs. That's for equals. We're not assigning something. If you're assigning something, it's one equal. If it's two, uh, it's comparing to see if they're equal to each other. And then we're just going to paste in the name that we already had copied. And then we're wanting to take out all of the rows, not the columns. So we'll add a, per, a comma here at the end. So if you remember in R, this piece is gonna be the rows and then this piece would be the columns. But we're gonna look inside of this column and just pull the rows where this is true. And we run that. And just to point out here something, to see if this worked. Uh, Dallas was the original data set that we were running. This had 47,346 observations. Uh, we ran this filter and created something new called airport. And inside of airport, we only have 3,652. It's good practice to view this. Let's just view airport. All right, as you can see here, all of the names are gonna be the airport one now, even if you scroll way down. Again, we only see the airport. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is more data. So we do have some NAs still but a lot of these other columns got filled. So that's good, right? We wanna have more data that we can look at. And so we'll put a note here above this view. Notice that the number of observations shrunk. So it didn't work. Okay, and so for this model, we are going to create an endogenous model here and what that means is that there are going to be no variables driving this model uh, what this really means is that data from the past is going to drive the prediction for the future so this is going to be the simplest time series model uh, we don't need a bunch of external variables and we'll talk about the implications and challenges with exogenous models but for an endogenous model is the simplest easiest form here so let's just use an endogenous model um, and to do this right, what do we want to predict? If we looked here at the data, there's 74 different variables. And if you glance through here, there's something called Tmax right here, which is the Tmax column. And another column called Tmin. Uh, this is the maximum temperature and minimum temperature for that day. This will be the easiest to model. This will be the simplest thing to do here. So we're going to select um, temperatures, temperatures, okay. And to do this, we are gonna to wanna to keep three variables here specifically. So we already looked at Tmax, Tmin, but this is a time series, so we're also concerned um, with the date. So we wanna keep here also the date. So let's say we wanna keep date, Tmin, and Tmax. Um, to do that here, we're just gonna create a variable called vars k for vars keep, so keep our variables. Uh, and we wanna keep in here date. 
We want to keep in uh, T max, and we want to keep in T min. And then we're going to overwrite the airport data set. So right now, if you look, it has 74 variables. Um, we want to overwrite it, so we'll call it airport. And then we'll say, okay, we take our airport data set, and we want to keep the variables K. And if we run these two lines of code, you'll notice now up here that airport only has three variables. So we went from 74 variables to three variables, and we can view this as well. Right, we're just gonna type in view and type in airport. And you'll see now here the data set only has the date column, the Tmax, and the Tmin. So that's exactly what we wanted. It's simplified. Uh, we're not getting overly confused with all the other columns. Sometimes you can be running code and you might call the wrong column. So it's best to drop stuff that you're not going to need. Um, it's also can cause issues if you're trying to process an entire data table. So we're not going to be doing that for this example. But sometimes if columns are in different formats, it can cause issues. So it's just best practice in general. Uh, to keep what you need. If you're doing higher end analytics, you might keep the other columns, uh, but that's a little bit more advanced. We'll talk about that in future videos. Okay, and let's just plot out. So let's do a, we'll just call this a quick and dirty plot here of what the data looks like. And to do this, you can just use the plot function. So we're gonna say plot. We're gonna do our X variable, which is going to be the airport data set and we want date, and then the Y is going to be airport, and let's just do the max. I'm just gonna do one of these real quick. And plot it and wait. And then on the right here you'll see, let's make this a little bigger. You'll see it's like a scatter and you see all these points, but there's a clear, nice, pretty pattern, very cyclical, right? Year over year, we're seeing something similar. Maybe it's year over year. We're going to look at it in a sec. Um, so the chart updates and resizes. It's kind of hard to see here, which is fine. So the plot function is something quick and easy to use, but that's not really pretty. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on plotting. I'm not a big fan of spending hours on plots unless it's going to like a senior director or someone that's important. It's going to have our time reading this without all the titles and labels and everything. But what we want to do is we want to use ggplot um, to plot out our data. However, so put this in caps here. However, um, we need to reformat the date column uh, to a date format. Okay, so basically R doesn't know that the date column's a date format in many cases, it gets confused. It's a computer, so it's not real bright. Um, so to do that, we're just gonna reformat this real quick. So we're gonna type in airport, and we're gonna say date, so this variable here. And we're gonna say as date, and then we're gonna do as character. So I'll explain this in a second, but then we're going to type in airport, which is our data set, and we're going to specify the date variable. And then the format is going to be equal to... Okay, so we need to tell it how is the date format. So what we're really doing here is we're taking this variable, we're converting it to character first, and then we're going to pass it to the date one. If you did it as numeric, the date function doesn't like the numeric version of it it rather would see a character format and that's what it likes to handle. So we're gonna convert it to character first and then convert it into the date format. Um, you need to tell it though which format is it's inside of. So let's just look back here at airport. Um, so if you look here, we have 2010-0101. That doesn't tell us much. If you scroll down here though, so we're over 12, 2010-0114. Uh, so this is going to be year and then it's gonna be month, which is the 01. And then 14 is going to be the day, because obviously you can't have a month that's greater than 12. So it's going to be year, month, day. So we'll go back in here, and we'll do percentage Y. So it's going to be the year. Then it's going to be a forward slash percentage month. So an M forward slash, and then percentage D for day. Okay. And then we're going to run that real quick. 
it will update and change that inside of our data set. The fact that we don't have any errors or warnings down here means that it worked. Okay, so now we're gonna use uh, ggplot2. If you don't have it, you can type in install.packages, type in double quotes, ggplot2, and then you would run that. Um, if you look over here in my packages though, we already have ggplot2, which is here. Uh, you could actually just click this if you wanted, but code-wise, what you would type in after you install it is you type in library and then do ggplot2, and then we'll run that. And then finally, we're going to type in here our nice pretty code. So we're going to type in ggplot, okay, it's the function we're going to use here. We're going to plus... Um, geom lines, we want a line chart. And then we're gonna have our AES, which is where you define uh, your X's and your Y's here. So X is going to be equal to airport. And then we're gonna say date. Then we're gonna have Y is equal to airport. And let's do the min first here. Okay, so that's our X and our Y inside of AES. Then we're gonna go outside of that, put a comma, tell it what color we want. So I want the color to be equal to blue. And then we're gonna end the parentheses here and then put plus, we'll put a new line. Um, we're gonna add another geom and we're gonna do line and we're gonna do AES. And then we're gonna type in again, X, well, you can copy and paste this if you want. So our X is going to be equal to the date. And then the Y is going to be the same as above, but instead of T min, it's gonna be T max. And then color is going to be, let's equal red. So blue is cold, so that'll be the men. Uh, red is hot, so that'll be the max. And then we can run these. And you'll see here on the right, we have this nice pretty chart. Um, I'll make it a little bigger here. Okay, and now just to do a mental sanity check here, right? We said that the maximum values were going to be red because they're hot. So for all these days, we should see that red is greater than blue. We see that. Anyways, in this video, we've just got the data prepared. We've kind of set our goal, what we want to model here. Um, we have the date set up. We have the temperature set up, right? We know that the highs are higher than the lows because the red's higher than the blue. But at this point, we're all ready to kind of start modeling. Everything's kind of clean in process at this point. But anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.